I'm Sonaik Mekjin, Global Head of Strategic Accounting Partnerships. I'd like to welcome everyone to our exciting session today. You've been hearing about today's compliance issues and how they affect the accounting industry. But we're going to do something a little different today. Instead of focusing on the present for this session, we're focusing on the future. We're joined today by two thought leaders and tax industry digital transformation experts who have for many years supported companies as they transform their operations. Joni Johnson Powell is both a CPA and JD. She's a KPMG partner in their SALT transaction tax systems practice. Joni has more than 25 years of experience specializing in indirect tax software consulting. She has also very broad experience working with accounting firms of all sizes, including running her own consulting business. She advocates for digital transformation and all the benefits that companies can draw from it. And Sanjay Parthasarthi is our Avalara Chief Product Officer and leads the Avalara product vision and direction. He too is a technology expert and is one of the founders of the data intelligence startup Index, which was later acquired by Avalara. He's also a former Microsoft executive and was their corporate VP of the Startup Business Accelerator program, which actually he created. I know these two individuals personally, and they are truly visionaries. We're so excited to have them here to discuss what technology is going to be in the next five to 10 years or so, and how that relates to the accounting industry. This will be covered from two perspectives, accountants leveraging technology for internal operations to add efficiency and growth, and also accountants implementing technology for their clients. I'm going to tee up three topics for Sanjay and Joni. Number one, cross-border to global trade. Number two, e-invoicing to e-compliance. And number three, a personal favorite of mine, autonomous compliance. Have a great conversation. Thank you so much, Sona. It's great to be here. And Joni, wonderful to see you. How are you? I'm doing great. Really excited to be here today and really excited about the topics we have to discuss. All right, let's jump right in, I guess. <laughs> and um, you know, as Sona teed it up, the first topic is cross-border to global trade. I'd love to get your view on how you think about cross-border and global trade. Are they different? Are they the same? How do you think about it? Well, you know, I, I, really, I really think about this, this whole dynamic that we find ourselves in today, that it's really the end-to-end -end supply chain. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, a process that starts from beginning to end. And it's not just about a transaction between a company and their customer. It's all the stuff in between. You're so right, Joni. I mean, cross-border, the way you know, I've been thinking about it, you know, really focuses on calculation of you know, customs duty you know, tax, if you will, right? And that's been the focus for, for a little while. But it's much more than that, right? Because you know, when, you're, when, you, when you think about global trade, it's the delivery of the goods to the end customer, right? And there you have to clear customs. You have to think about the landed cost, which is the total cost after going through everything you know, and it lands with the customer. And it isn't just, you know, uh, business to consumer anymore either, is it? It's, it's B2B and it's the entire supply chain, raw materials, manufactured goods, and so on. So it's so much bigger than just calculating cross-border tax where, you know, everybody is giving it, a, you know, the right level of importance, but, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy that you're thinking about it so broadly. Now, Tony, if, if you don't mind, let me ask you another question. Um, sure. Why do you think this is important to the audience? Why, why is it such a big topic these days for you? Well, you know, first and foremost, you know, I, th I think it's something that hasn't always been present of mine. I don't, I don't know that it's always kind of fall into the, the purview of, of what is tax. But, you know, you cannot, in our global world today, you cannot ignore the importance of the, you know, the, the, the duties, the customs, and all of the, the processes in between. It really is, is requiring um, the tax group and the tax department and accounting really a collaboration amongst groups to make sure that companies are in compliance. Yeah, and with, and with um, you know, cross-border um, transactions, you know, growing so fast. I mean, some say that 
uh, cross-border transactions where um, people buy and sell goods across you know, country boundaries is growing 50% faster than domestic online you know, right. uh, purchases. So it's, it's becoming more you know, front and center for, um, for everybody. And you know, the other thing um, uh, I think is important is when people are buying goods internationally, if, they don't ha if they're not guaranteed the landed cost, you know, um, you know, and, and, and there's some unexpected costs at the end when they receive it, they're likely to you know, return the goods. And you don't want that, right? And so That's it's right. really important to look at that full picture. That's why I think this is so important. Absolutely, absolutely agree. And so just imagine the future, uh, Joni. What, what, what do you think the future looks like for uh, cross-border and, and global trade? Well, I, I think that it's an issue that all companies are going to have to embrace. I think it's going to require uh, digitization mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of ways. And it's going to require kind of a change from being reactive to being proactive in your transactions on a day to day basis. And I know you have a favorite topic on this on this one, which is blockchain. How, how is blockchain going to you know, impact uh, global trade, you think? Well, you know, blo blockchain has kind of been a buzzword for the last, you know, probably three to five years. But I think now it's really coming into reality how it really can play an important part in the end-to-end -end structure of a transaction. And so if you think about, um, you know, the way that blockchain works, really every party a part of is part of that transaction. And that's going to include um, your taxing authorities, your custom and duties, the entire transaction will be all kind of part of this blockchain um, uh, technology that's going to ensure that all parties are able to, uh, you know, accept and approve of that transaction. And, so, and that's going to be important on the go forward. No, no more pay push paper pushing, right? Right. So keeping track of the end-to-end -end journey of the goods, yes. um, you know, is, is, and, and in, in a transparent way, uh, so everybody, all parties can can uh, check it out. Is a is a is potentially a a transformational um, you know future. But for me, Absolutely. when I think about when I think about you know the impact. Imagine if goods crossing borders was just as simple and efficient as goods that didn't have to. You know, you're having it right. delivered. You know, from a local vendor. Or you're having it delivered from, you know, Tokyo in Japan, and it's the same thing, the same right. complexity or the same simplicity, if you will. Right. I mean, that that too is transformational, is transformational, and that's what I think global trade compliance is going to is going to enable. So yeah, I look absolutely forward to that agree. because I get all my shoes from Europe. So <laughs> <laughs> they're nice shoes at that. <laughs> So, so what do you think are the challenges? I think you already mentioned one, but I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you how, what you think the challenges are for global trade. Yeah, you know, I think data privacy is, is going to be a, an issue. I think it's, it's, it's at the forefront of what we deal with today. Uh, the accuracy of the data is going to import, be important as well as standardization. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's a primary issue, I think, in all of the... The, the global trade and cross borders that we've got to have some type of standardization so that both customers and companies can rely on, you know, what's required of them. Right. I mean, customs forms have to be, you know, standardized. And, right. you know, and, and, and I know this is another favorite of yours. It's all got to be digital. All the documents yes. have to be digital so that they right. can go from one part of the, the, the chain to another uh, with a with a standard approach, and I think that's going to be really important for for global trade compliance to be successful. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent agree. Should we go on to the next topic? Yeah, which is one of my favorites because I talk okay. about it probably on a daily basis. Um, so our next topic is e-invoicing and e-compliance, mm -hmm. and um, it's really been at the forefront of a lot of the work that we've been doing um, with our clients because. It's an up and coming issue, and a lot of companies aren't aren't prepared for it. And I I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, and I think it's the fundamental you know aspect of e-invoicing for me is this notion that everything is going real time, right? That's right. That's one piece of it. 
But the second piece is that the government wants to insert itself in the middle, right? Oh, yeah. And want to, wants to maybe approve every invoice and wants That's the companies right. to file it, you know, a, a return or a report for every transaction that they do, right? And so that, those are the two combining right. things um, that I think are important here. Yes, I mean, government entities now throughout the world are uh, creating new regulations and rules that essentially allows them to um, have the information related to a transaction real time. So, you know, the vendor, the price, the product, all of that, they're going to have that information at their disposal at the time that the transaction happens. And what's, you know, what's really concerning about some of the rules is that if you do not comply, you may not be able to do business in that country. So it requires companies to be ready um, as these new rules are rolled out to, you know, have the technology in place to be able to meet the complexity. And much like what we just talked about with global trade, you know, the standardization, I think, is what we really need um, to allow companies to, to know what they, you know, what's required of them. And so, you know, this is another area that we're going to look to, um, you know, each of the tax the global tax authorities to come together and come up with some standardization. And Joni, why, why are governments so interested in yeah, e-invoicing today? Um, I think there's a, quite a few different reasons, and, and I think it varies depending on, you know, the region. Um, you know, LATAM has had uh, e-invoicing and uh, digital reporting rules for, for years, 10, 20 years. Uh, they've been on top of this for a long time. And a lot of it was, I think, uh, part of kind of maybe the having some uh, control over transactions being reported, right? Uh, I think in Europe, what we're seeing now is the need for efficiency, right? Mm. So speed of the transaction, speed of information, um, so that governments can, you know, definitely hold people accountable, but also have that information at their disposal um, at the very beginning. I think uh, in the U.S., we're, we're not quite there yet, but, you know, there, there are groups within, you know, states that are looking at how they can also implement uh, similar uh, framework that we've seen in Europe and in Latin. And, and um, where do you think all of this is going, Joni? You know, five, seven years down the road, you know, what does the invoicing look like? You know, I think, uh, you know, at the, we're at the very beginnings of this really spreading globally. And, you know, my thoughts are that, you know, every country is going to have a requirement. Um, mm. You know, five, three, five, ten years from now, uh, we're no longer good at going to be preparing paper returns. <laughs> mm -hmm. And governments are going to have real-time information, which means I think audits are going to change. I think that uh, some governments are already re uh, requiring or actually uh, sending the return to you, right? Because mm -hmm. they already have the information. You basically need to sign off and pay your bill. So it, it's definitely going to to change the dynamic of how the tax department functions. I think it's going to move from being a reactive environment to a proactive environment. Really, you need to make sure that data on the front end is accurate from, from mapping to tax rates to, um, you know, locations. So it's, it's definitely going to change a lot. Yeah, and, and, and I think the entire compliance journey workflow is going to go real time. So it's not just you know, the invoices and returns being, you know, uh, approved and filed real time, but payments, right? As you're yes. doing the transactions, the payments flow directly to the government. Right. You know, yes. why wait till the end of the quarter or the end of the That's month, right. right? If you I need agree. a license, you know, um, why can't you just apply for it and get it real time? And, 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 uh, and the example of, you know, customs documents that we used last time, why can't those be real time? Why do goods have oh. to be stuck in port for four days or four weeks, right? right. If, if everything is digital and it's real time, the government can approve it, you know, approve it real time as well. So I think yeah. real time is going to become, you know, a cornerstone of all, all compliance. And, and to me, it's just going to be part of what's expected. So every oh, system out absolutely. there is just going to have to connect with the government, um, and do things real time. Uh, absolutely. And, and I think it's a, it's a call to businesses too. We've all been part of a digital transformation in the pandemic, and I think it's going to continue. 
And um, we're really going to be on a road that, that companies really need to look at their infrastructure, infrastructure as well as you know, the way that they do business. And it's going to have to change across the board. And your final word on what you think is the most important or key challenge for um, e-invoicing and e-compliance? Yeah, you know, I, I really think it's it's around standardization. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're working with clients on a daily basis and uh, the ability to comply. So, so governments can roll out all the rules that they need, but if companies cannot comply, you know, the, the goal of the in, of e-invoicing and, and the digital reporting is going to be lost because not every company is going to be, a, be able to comply. So there's, there's got to be some uh, collaboration amongst the governments to mm. come up with a standard approach. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, you ready to do the final topic? Yes, Autonomous absolutely. compliance? <laughs> so this is... This is, you know, and obviously an area that, that I care deeply about, having, you know, done the artificial intelligence and machine learning startup, which Avalara bought a few years ago. And, you know, today we talk a lot about automation. Um, and I want to kind of move the goalposts, if you will, a little bit, you know, further to talk about autonomous. And the analogy I use is, you know, think about cruise control in your car versus self-driving cars. Right, but I just want to make it really clear, even if the car can be self-driving, the driver's always got to be in control. The same with compliance, right? Today we're right. automating compliance, right? But I think eventually compliance can be completely autonomous with tax experts or you know, a business owner kind of keeping control of the whole, whole process. You know, Joni, how, where do you think all of this automation is going it, you know, from what you're seeing out there with customers? You know, I, I think it's 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 continually to, it's continuing to evolve, right? So so we started out with task automation, right? Mm -hmm. So RPA, you know, um, looking at workflows, and I think we're going to continue to see that development. But now I think we're looking at smarter automation, right? Mm -hmm. So using machine learning or or AI, so that it's not just a task, but it's actually a decision that's being made. You know looking at the data, understanding the data, and making um, decisions or mm -hmm. assumptions or, um, you know, uh, uh, impacting the next phase of what happens in that transaction. Yeah, so you said, I you do, said it, do see it's going to continue to evolve. No, you're absolutely right. And you said an important and interesting word there. You said task. And I think a lot of automation has been focused on a task or mm -hmm. a small set of right. tasks. Right. And so, for example, you know, um, you know, figuring out the tax code for a product. Right. That is a task. Right. Um, That's right. But I think automation is starting to get into the realm of documents with, you know, with um, OCR, optical character recognition mm -hmm. and natural language processing. You're able to look at a document and go, yes, that's a passport or an identity document or an exemption right. certificate. Right. And. Yep. You know, a document is a set of tasks, right? In a, in a, if, you, if you think about an exemption certificate, there's the business you know, name or there's the expiration mm -hmm. of the certificate. And you can think of those as separate tasks. But you also used a very important word, which I think is workflow. And imagine a document that has to be signed by multiple people, right? Approved right. or a document that has to be verified and then signed by a bunch of people. That's hard for automation to do today. Right. And right. to me, that's the holy grail. If the system can autonomously take care of all of those tasks and documents in an extended workflow. Are, are you seeing are you seeing a lot of that in, in the market, Joni? You know, just just yesterday had a, a conversation, you know, we're working with the client to assess, you know, where are you and where do you want to go? And more and more clients I see are looking to create that workflow, you know, using, you know, using tools and automation. Um, and it's continuous, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's evolving. And, and I really see that there's a dynamic shift in the function of the tax department. Um, mm -hmm. They're looking to be more efficient. And I think they're really being required to do more with less. So that means mm -hmm. there's got to be some automation in the process of compliance. And it's, it's becoming 
uh, you know, something that's part of the forefront and part of part of a, a significant change. Right. And compliance is such a network of people working together and the workflows mm -hmm. across this network of people, including the government. You know, businesses are involved, right. consumers are involved, the government is involved. And imagine being able to automate all of that and have the system take care of it for you. That's how I think right. about, you know, autonomous compliance or the self-driving car, if you will. And it's coming. The technology coming. is there, right? Yep. It's, it's, the question to me is how willing our people, our governments, you know, to take the risk um, with this kind of autonomous compliance. Yeah, and, and I really think that, you know, where we find ourselves today, that there's really not a choice. I, mm. I think we're, we're all going to have to, you know, accommodate and change the way that we do business um, going forward. Yeah, and, and, and for, what do you think are the challenges with, um, for autonomous compliance? Because ultimately, we, you, you said it's going to happen, but it's slower, I think, than we would all want. So what, yeah. what, what do you think are the challenges? Well, I, I think the challenges are, you know, skill sets, mm -hmm. right? You know, a, a lot of folks that are in AP or in tax, uh, you know, we we've, have an education around accounting, um, but technology needs to be at the forefront. And I, and I do see that, you know, companies and universities are, are focusing on um, harnessing, you know, more technical skills, mm. uh, you know, so I think that there's going to be some resource constraints uh, mm. in people. And then there's also going to be some resource constraints in dollars. Mm. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a significant lift to transform a business end to end um, and digitize uh, a lot of tasks that have been done, you know, manually. And so yeah. it's going to require some, some financial investment as well. Yeah, I, I think it's going to, you know, end up with the comfort level people have in trusting technology mm -hmm. and understanding where they need to kind of, you know, jump in if they need to. That right. balance, that comfort level of knowing when to let the technology run but always be in control and being able to jump in. I think that's going to take a lot of, uh, I'll call it process innovation, because this is going yes. to be, you know, humans and machines working together, doing slightly right. different things. Right. Um, and I think, you know, that the, the social aspects, I think, are going to define how autonomous compliance is ultimately adopted and, and the value realized. Agree. 100% agree. Yeah, so we're, we're, a change is coming, you know, a change is definitely coming from all of us. Yeah, and, and, and you know, with your expertise and your company's expertise in, in, you know, marrying technology to the organizational needs and Avalara's expertise in, in the technology uh, and making it simple and easy and, and as automated and autonomous as possible, I think the future is going to be here sooner than we think but it's gonna take longer than we expect. That's right, that's right. I, I think the future is here. It, it's just a matter of now of, of, of deploying these new, these new strategies and these new processes um, across the board. Wonderful, thank you, thank you so much, Joni, for that conversation. Thank and you. I see that we're at the end of our time. Uh, hope you all in the audience you know, enjoyed this. And I, I certainly enjoyed you know, chatting with Joni. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Joni and Sanjay, you've given us quite a bit to think about. These are topics we can spend hours discussing, but unfortunately, we're at the end of our time. I want to thank you both for sharing your thoughts with us today. I also want to thank the audience for being here with us. Thank you.